Korea was clearly the priority last year. I think it is Iran this year. Um, you saw the Iranian president taking a hard line. I think you're going to hear a pretty hard line from the president, both in his speech today and in the UN Security Council session tomorrow. If the president got everything he wanted with Iran, what would, what would that look like? No more, uh, no more adventurism in, in any countries in the world in terms of funding. Uh, terrorism, no more missile terror. What, what would it be? What, what would be a detente between the United States and Iran? What's that look like? Well, I think first it would be the core JCPOA, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, would be tightened up a bit, particularly as to inspections. But then the other issues, missile proliferation, regional uh, uh, stability, also uh, U.S. prisoners held uh, in Iran. I actually uh, was with a group that met with President Rouhani last evening. Uh, it's been reported in the papers this morning. I was there to raise the issue of Americans held in Evan prison. And so I think there is that core JCPOA, but then there are those issues about proliferation, about regional uh, instability, terrorism, as you mentioned, uh, but also the American prisoners held uh, in Iran. It helps to have the support of, of your people from the ground up. Is that, are you starting to see that reach a critical point there yet? He, he talks tough and he's still in charge, but I mean, he's, he has concerns at home, doesn't he? Uh, this, is, this is Rouhani. He certainly does you have. You thought them. I was talking about Trump? Yeah, he's got trouble with the ground up. He's got 60% against him, too. Trying to yeah. the pronouns yeah. as best yeah. I could. Yeah. Yeah. Rouhani clearly has uh, problems at home. Um, you've seen some of the street demonstrations primarily driven by a deteriorating economy. You saw this uh, attack recently where quite a number of people were killed. There are a lot of pressures uh, inside Iran. Lives in a tough neighborhood. Uh, I would hope that Iran would see it as being in their interest to move toward a path of engagement with the U.S. and others on that broader range of issues, not just uh, the agreement itself. Ambassador, we, we, Eamon hinted at this, but we, we've seen a big change in diplomacy and how it's dealt with in this administration versus in past. Conventional wisdom has always been that you need to allow the Chinese to save face in a trade negotiation, that you need to allow other leaders to be able to go home and say to their constituencies, we're winning on something too. What do you think about this new sort of bull in a china shop mentality? And is it working? Are you seeing results from it? Well, I think we're seeing some results. I mean, typically at the UN General Assembly, it's all about political and diplomatic issues. More recently, trade and other issues have come into uh, the discussions during this week in New York. I just mean more broadly in diplomatic right. approaches. So, so yesterday, for example, a new and improved U.S.-Korea free trade agreement was signed. Mm -hmm. The president had taken a very frontal position on that. They've been very clear. They said this week is about sovereignty, um, not just U.S. sovereignty, but the sovereignty of other countries. My feeling is let's have people come to the table, play their strongest cards, and then find that mid-ground uh, that serves both interests. And I think the president, the one thing he can say is he's pretty clear about what his concerns are. I think that's helpful to the other side. Mm -hmm. Progress has been made in some cases, uh, particularly on Korea on trade. I would say in other areas with Europe, Mexico, uh, Canada, and especially China, still some work to be done. You know, I had a question about sovereignty, but when you mentioned that dinner with Rouhani last night, I, I really want to find out more about that. <laughs> and what's Rouhani like at, in person? I mean, we saw that clip of him with Lester Holt on television. We, we see him at the big formal set pieces. But when you meet with him one-on-one, -on -one, do you get a sense of the man? I didn't meet with him one-on-one, -on -one, Eamon. It was a group of about 20 people. Um, this 20 is, on one. You can, yeah, 20, 20 You got closer on to him than I've ever he been. had people, both from his staff and the foreign minister there. I think what you saw on television was what I saw um, in the room that we were in. Um, he is uh, very articulate, relatively uh, congenial in the discussion, but really quite hard line. And I would say on the issues that were raised from the JCPOA, through Syria, through missile proliferation. Um, he, was, he was very tough, I would say, on the prisoner issues uh, that we raised. I, for example, represent Princeton University, who has a 28-year-old graduate student uh, who has been held prisoner for two years now. Um, I would say that he was uh, receptive, um, but not as responsive as we would like to have seen. Fascinating.